scary at the best of times, and in the old days they were very sterile, I mean, in, in the sense that they weren't personal at all. And, and the staff wasn't, and I don't think it was because they weren't great people, it was just the environment. What we felt uh, could have been improved um, during our stay there was the emotional support as well as the physical support. And I could feel the tension, and I, and I think it just boiled down to, to us having to know that maybe that back part was jam-packed, but we weren't told. We seen an empty waiting room. I spend a lot of time talking to patients. I spend a lot of time talking to patients and their families. And um, I want them to feel welcome in the decision-making process. And I actually enjoy it when there's more family around because it makes the whole process easier. Because some family members will hear something different than the patient might hear and they'll remind them later. Sometimes I don't remember something that simple but that important that uh, they, they can't intubate me. They have a hard time getting the tube down my throat. And luckily, Marie being there, she remembered and, and, and mentioned it to him that can this operation be done epi with an epidural? And, and, and strangely enough, he said he didn't, he's never done it that way, um, that it could be dangerous, but uh, he would look into it. There was another nurse in an ICU who um, got to know Emmy in a way and took special attention into finding out what made her feel calm and um, she often let me know and reminded me that um, I could rub my daughter's forehead and um, that would soothe her. I wasn't sure, however, how that was being shared with the rest of the healthcare team. And I'm very excited to hear that about the patient whiteboards where I think this could have made a big difference in ensuring the communication went throughout the care providers, um, that when they came into her room they would see that, um, you know, rubbing her softly on her forehead would make her feel better. I was just leaving the hospital to go home for dinner and uh, who walks down the corridor but my son from uh, from near Sarnia. He'd flown up that day to join us and he's the one who uh, really enabled me to survive through it. He was also a great help to Barb because he actually stayed overnight with her in the hospital and did a lot of the things that she needed help with in the middle of the night that uh, I just couldn't have done that. But family support is, uh, is very important and uh, it sure helped me through a very difficult situation. One time after, shortly after we got there and I noticed this consistently, I went to the, the nurse that was taking care of Nick that day and said like, is this normal? And she said, yeah. She said, this is what we do. Everything is a team effort. Um, and their attitude was that if everybody was involved all the time, there was a consistency there, which I thought was, I, I actually thought I was on a different planet. It was, it was good. Even though everything was falling apart, it was still, reassuring. We did not have a staff come in that didn't say who they were, what they were going to do, and so it just it just meant always that you felt totally in touch with the care because you knew that this one was that coming in to do that for Roger and he was he was a, quite a bit groggy but it meant so much to me that they were looking at him like Roger Rickards and not just a head in a bed. It, it makes the process easier because the patient knows what the issues are. They, we've talked about what is going to happen, we've talked about what might happen, we've talked about what might not happen. And when it, it, it happens, they're, they have an idea as to what to expect. And that alleviates a lot of anxiety, makes the process a lot smoother. I mean, it's not a, an autocracy, it's not a a dictatorship in, in the healthcare. It's not a top-down process. There are decisions that are made, and as a clinician, I feel responsible ultimately um, for the patient's care, patients under my care. But it is a democracy, and I think it's important that people understand that. To forget the small cogs in the wheel, and those are our patients. And I think we can't afford not to keep them in mind 
We can't afford not to keep their needs, their interests, their desires, their hopes in mind. And it becomes very easy to do when you get into a bigger facility, hundreds of doctors, research people, um, ancillary people who help us, all the care providers that are involved. And what are we fu fundamentally here for? We're fundamentally here for the patient and their family. And that's why we have to succeed because they're the ones that cause us to be here.